Well, hello there, Internet. I thought that I would work on a self-contained metal volcano tamer. And this is the design I came up with. As you can see, we're in debug mode. Spawned in some volcanoes to play with. The layout needs a little bit of work, but essentially it is your standard steel, everything inside of here, suck out the heat, use a sensor to drop it off, but you use a thermal regulator to keep the steam turbine just below 100 degrees. So the overlay, I found I needed the hydrogen tank because I needed to store up a bit of cool and it helped prevent the system from locking up. Sometimes thermal regulators aren't as good as aqua tuners and they don't rotate as well. Shipping wise, when it comes to solids, you need this one gap. It takes like one tick from the time this sees the correct temperature for this to flip and dump the correct packet out. Otherwise you dump stuff that's too hot out of there. So I thought we'd run, a couple of these have gone dormant, but I figured out the math on how big they are. So we'll let them dump off some heat. We'll then do a fake eruption and see what happens. If you find you need more cooling, like for copper or iron volcanoes, you just toss on a couple of batteries. So, as long as the steam turbine has some air around it, preferably not chlorine or carbon dioxide, then this will work. If you're in a vacuum, you need to put some liquid in here or seal it in and pump it full of oxygen or hydrogen or something else. So this is just about done dumping everything off. I have some heat damage here because I uh, accidentally did three test eruptions once and that was a uh, bit of a mistake by clicking three times. So let's say we want copper eruption. Copper liquid. And this volcano I figured out comes out to about 400 kilograms. Now mind you that doesn't always come out at once. So let's Pause this real quick and make sure I get the right temperature. We're looking for 22. Oh, it's not nearly hot enough. Oh, I forgot to put in the temperature. This is why we paused. There we go, 22, 26, perfect. So just simulated an eruption. That then activates the steam turbine. As you can see at first, there's not quite enough power then it all starts working, dumps it over here, and then away you go. So as long as the temperature in here is below 200, there's almost no change for the steam turbine overheating. It's only once this temperature gets above 200 that this runs into issues. And I've got the liquid pipe sucking out a bit of heat, and then the gas pipe sucking out more. Let's see, we're getting up to 190. We are actually going to go for a second eruption just to really make this work. So I can see the room now above 200. So the steam turbine is going to keep increasing in heat. And our goal is to get it, try and keep it below 100. As you can see, the temperature in the room is already stabilizing at 220, and then it's going to start coming down. Looks like we might just overheat the steam turbine. We're getting close. But that was a double eruption. In a single eruption, it never would happen. Yeah, the room, the temperature in here is already coming down. It was 220, now it's down to 210. So even with a double eruption, we didn't hit it. As you can see, there's a bit of extra copper sitting over here, which will slowly give off heat. And then as soon as this, I've got it set to 130. As soon as these packets get below 130, then this will start dumping them out. Gold doesn't produce nearly as much heat, so that one's no big deal. Iron is definitely different. So iron comes in at... I don't know why my recording just paused there. I think I hit the wrong button, but... We actually dumped in some copper, then I dumped in an eruption of iron. As you can see, it's definitely getting hotter this time. It's 
2.30 in this room. And now we are occasionally overheating the steam turbine. But the temperature in here is still going to come down. And this was a double eruption at 2,800 degrees Kelvin. So while, yeah, it is interrupting a bit, it's still sucking some heat out of it. This is still sucking some heat out of it. And the temperatures in here, we're going to speed this up, are still slowly dropping. This is worst case scenario if this does overheat a little bit. Once the room, yeah, we're just about there. Once the room gets down to 210, then this can keep up heat wise. Speed it up again. Yes, even though we are overheating the steam turbine a little bit, it's still keeping up. And once this room gets below 200, then it'll just stay on. The room in here is now down to 195. And then this should start coming down in temperature. We've got this coming in at 29, coming out at 20. Oh, there we are, 36. Oh, that's on the wrong thing. Let me just set that down even colder. Yeah, the room here is already down to 190. And again, we don't care about the power, we don't care about anything as long as the steam turbine eventually gets back down to temperature. Which is where it's going right now. This room's still coming down in temperature, it's just taking longer because we did a double eruption and overheated it. And as soon as the eruption is over, as this stuff starts to cool down, cool down gets dumped out, these batteries will then pre-chill the steam turbine down even more. So this won't happen. But like I said, double eruption. It's a bit more than this can normally handle and it looks like we're now stabilized. Yeah, 99.9 .9, and then now it comes down. So even getting through a double eruption took some time. All in all, I think it's a great little system. It's the first real use of a thermoregulator I've found that's helpful, but it works great. You know, I had this on a previous base, and if it's got really low air pressure, then you need to put some liquid in there. Other than that, it works. Use it, improve on it, share your designs. Let me know what you think.